Well, we've talked a lot all year about having a gladiator mentality. And, you know, I opened up our, our, our postseason meeting with, the, with the, that image from the gladiator, um, with him being in the Coliseum, you know, surrounded. And, uh, you know, we've talked about that on the road all year. We want to have a gladiator mentality, not expect to be given, given anything, um, and to expect for us to stick together. Welcome back to the Coach Godwin Show. I'm Coach Karan Godwin, all-time leading scorer at the University of North Florida, also author of Everyone Hates a Ball Hog, But They All Love a Score. If you're not listening to this podcast via my basketball training app, go ahead and go to your iPhone and Android app store, search Coach Godwin, and there you have it, free of charge, plenty of basketball training information. Today we have a special show that's dedicated to all you high school kids and even kids in college that want to know how to become successful once you get on campus. And uh, we have a special guest, a rising college basketball coach and star. He's currently at Mount St. Mary's. He's coached at William & Mary, also VCU. Um, he's, he's one of the youngest Division One coaches out there that actually made it to the conference championship game in his first season. Coach Jamie and Christian, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Now let's dive into your system. I, I hear that you coined it Mayhem, and um, and if you could talk a little bit about your system and the type of player that you're looking to recruit. Well, Mayhem is all about dictating pace and tempo, and you know we really try to punch guys in the mouth defensively. Uh, we're pressing for 40 minutes, um, end to end. I mean, as soon as the ball goes in, we want to make sure the point guard catches the ball as close to the end line as possible, and and we're pressing and trapping as much as possible throughout the course of a game. We really want to make sure that. Uh, you know, that we make you really work for it. You know, last year, we think we were 11th in the country in forcing turnovers. We, you know, we went to Indiana, we turned Indiana over 20 times. Um, just had a ton of success with turning people over. And I think, you know, it's because, you know, we're going to play 10 to 11 guys every night. Um, we've got to be really committed to one another. We've got to play with a tremendous high motor. And to play that way, you got to have unconditional buy-in for the system and the style and for the guy beside you. Because sometimes you're going to be a little bit fatigued and you've got to find a way your fatigue to find that extra inch to get that deflection from the teammate beside you. And then offensively, you know, we're going to play with a lot of freedom. You know, we shot the fourth most threes in college basketball last year. We're going to continue to do that while I'm here. Um, I like to shoot 24 threes a night. So, you know, we're going to play with a ton of freedom. But, you know, because of that style, because we love to press shoot full floor and we love to shoot a ton of threes, you know, we've got to recruit guys with great length, guys with great, great motor, uh, ability to shoot the ball, and then probably, if you look at an intangible, you know, we need guys that are 12-month guys that can buy in, the, to have unconditional buy-in for what we need to do, that are incredibly competitive, and that, number one, you know, overall that, they've got to love playing the game of basketball. And I think, you know, at the end of the year last year, we had guys on the floor and guys in our program who loved playing the game. And I think it's a fun style if you love playing because there's plenty of opportunity there to even make a mistake, but then overcome it in the next play or next play before it, because we're going to give you a ton of opportunity. And I'll tell you, Coach, it sounds like a great system. Um, you are actually able to change the culture right away, and I know that's not easy um, coming into a situation where you're the new guy. But let's talk about what it takes to actually play in that system. And when I when I say that, I'm talking about the preseason. And uh, I tell my kids all the time, the kids I train that are in high school that the toughest part of college basketball a lot of times isn't even on the court. It's getting through preseason. So can you talk a little bit about when that freshman uh, um, enters the, his freshman year and, and the things that you guys do in the preseason to get them prepared? Yeah, well, I think the first thing is if you're a freshman, you know, you know understand that you're going to need to be in incredible shape from day one. I think, you know, understanding the conditioning level of a college athlete versus a high school athlete, you know, it's basically from going from uh, – the major leagues to the minor leagues. I mean, it's a big jump. I mean, it's you got to be conditioned. I see so many freshmen come in and they're not conditioned. You know, they're not ready for the daily grind of it. Now, you can't do everything. You know, if you don't have college level conditioning at your hometown, it's going to be hard to do it. But you can do everything you can to make sure that when you come in, you're ready to compete. Because the biggest thing is when your freshmen arrive, you want to make sure that they're competing and they understand the level of competition. Um, so I think the first thing is you want to come in, you want to get yourself in the best shape you've ever been in in your life. Um, I, one of my freshmen asked me, and I told him, I said, work as hard as you can, and then work yourself to exhaustion. That's how that's how ready you need to be. Um, so I think that's the first thing. You know, when we get to the preseason part, you know, we're going to bring the guys in the first week. We're going to test them to kind of see where their foundation is. 
you know, testing and giving us a foundation allows us to know, you know, where their starting point is. You know, guys are just strong at different points, but we want to have a strong idea of where they are. Uh, from that point on, you know, because of how we play, we do a lot of running. You know, we're going to do four days of running, four days of heavy conditioning, um, but we're going to do a lot of sprinting, uh, a lot of sprinting, a lot of sprinting, a lot of push-ups, a lot of sit-ups, a lot of flutter kicks. In the last preseason, we actually worked out. We did very little weight training, and we did all stuff with, with your own body weight. And I think it really helped our team develop a level of toughness, um, because when you're on the floor, there's no weight from the floor. So I think it helped us develop a level of toughness, a level of competitiveness between one another, and it made us really have to have to look inside of ourselves, decide how much more can I do. The answer often is when you're looking inside yourself, to find out how much more you can do. You can do a lot more. Um, so we were able to do that with our guys last three seasons. That's just conditioning. We haven't even gotten to the floor yet. Um, and then when you get to the floor, you know, I want to see how guys are going to compete. I want to see if guys want to win every drill. We want a team of guys that want to win. We want a team of guys that all want to start. And if you can find guys that compete, no matter if they know the drill, or do a great job of the drill or not, if they want to, if they're willing to compete, and then you're able to coach them through their mistakes. Um, things we're looking at, we're looking at your mannerisms. Now I want to make sure that when I'm coaching you, you're giving me eye contact. You're giving me proper, proper contact so I know that you're understanding what I'm saying to you. Um, that's a huge step. Freshmen struggle with that. Freshmen struggle with that. They like to walk away. They like to put their hands on their knees. I want to make sure you have eye contact so I know that the information I'm giving you, you're taking in and can understand. Definitely. And um, I understand that while you were at VCU, you guys did a little Navy SEAL training as well for your preseason. Are you going to incorporate that at Mount St. Mary's? You know, we did. And we took a large part of what we did in our preseason last year was from what we did in those weeks at VCU when we did SEAL training. And that was a large part of it. I thought, I I always felt like that SEAL training was a great way to build mental toughness and a strong level of togetherness because of what the, a large part of the field training, which you can't see just in the YouTube videos that we put out there, a large part of it is you can't get to the next drill unless everyone completes the task. You know, so that's a great point of building your team of understanding that it only takes one person to hurt you. You know, it only takes one person. And so now everyone's got to raise themselves up. They've got to get to that bar that's going to get you to the next step. And I felt like that skill training was a great opportunity to do that. And it's also put our guys in really compromising position where they had to mentally be there, mentally understand, and sometimes they had to really speak up and help everyone around them. Oh, definitely. So my next point, and I remember my college days, um, after you actually get through the preseason, in the midst of that you have your academics. And, and I, I want to really hone in on this aspect of it because I know how tired I used to be waking up 5 o'clock in the morning, have to run sprints, run around campus, um, going to the weight room, uh, going to class, and then coming back to play or to coming back for individual instruction. Um, how do you recommend freshmen uh, balance their life between academics and basketball? Well, I think the first thing you got to understand um, is that if you do everything your coaches ask you to do, life is going to be, a, you know, your, your time is going to be a lot of fun. You know, your coaches, wherever you go, are going to ask you to go to study hall, they're going to ask you to make meetings, they're going to check in with you. If you make all those meetings and do all those things you're supposed to do, you go to class, you sit in the first three rows, all the things that they give you to do, your life's going to be a lot of fun. You know, the other side of it is if you don't, then us, as coaches, we have to make sure you're, you're where you are and where you're supposed to be at. So then we have to step in in a disciplinary fashion if you're not doing what you're supposed to do on a daily basis. So the first thing is commit yourself to a daily routine that's going to allow you to be successful. Uh, and I think academically, the biggest thing is during the middle of the day, this is what college kids love to do. They love to go to sleep. Oh, yeah. Well, that's okay for the, for the kid that can be up all night doing his homework. But for, for our athletes, we really encourage them to get a lot of their work done in the middle of the day. Do not go to sleep. And that's one of the hardest parts is our guys love to sleep during the middle of the day. So you get a nice class, you get class at 9 to 10, and you don't have another, you don't have anything till 2. Don't go back to sleep. Grab yourself something quick to eat, go to the library, and try to commit yourself to 3 to 5 hours every day of just studying, reading your materials, understanding your syllabus, going to your professor's offices. If you do these things, you're going to succeed academically. But too many people, too many students come in as freshmen in my last 10 years, too many of them, they come in and they think, well, you know, I did this in high school. Understand, this is a place for higher education. 
Yes. So you're going to have to take your understanding of education to a higher level. And so because of that, you're going to have to spend more time in, in, in terms of academics and understanding what you need to do. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm glad that you mentioned earlier about being competitive and freshmen coming in and, and really changing their mindset. And one of the things about competition that I don't think kids understand is it's more than just working hard. I think that being that you're on the Division One level, on the college basketball level, no matter what division it is, everyone works hard. But part of being competitive is actually learning the plays. It's actually, you know, being where you're supposed to be, help side defense. Um, Coach, I have a question for you. How many offensive plays do you run? Well, we run a lot. I mean, last season, we by the end of the year, we had 180 offensive plays in. Wow. Um, and we run a lot of plays. Uh, I'm sure there's people that run more than us. Um, but, you know, I want to make sure that I can get our guys the best shot every time down the floor. Um, so we have 180 overall plays. You know, at the start of the season last year, we probably had 75. Um, so, you know, we build on that all year long because you want to put your players in the best position to be successful. And I think when you watch this first play, as many people watch the NBA, you know, you see that, you know, every night you know, they probably only take six to eight shots that they can't make through their, they're out of position. They take great shots over the duration of a basketball game, and that's because that's why their offense is so efficient. That's our goal here. We want to be efficient. You know, I want to put five guys on the floor that can all score in different ways. You know, I would think we should have an offense that fits every one of their needs, and I think if we can do that, you know, we can get a bucket for a guy at any time when the mismatch presents itself. And I think we've got to be able to pounce on those moments. You know, if you get a bad defender on, on a, you know, sometimes it's, you, know, you get a bad defender on just an okay score. So I want my okay score to be a guy that can really score the ball. So that way, you know, we've got that mismatch for 40 minutes and we try to exploit it as many ways as we can. And definitely. And I always tell kids, that, and I actually created a DVD series, uh, three this series, saying that the game is 80% mental and 20% physical. Um, and you have to have that, that mental aspect because so many people do have the, the physical aspect. Now, you personally, uh, what statistical categories are you charting in your mayhem system for, for your guys? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. You know, one of the things we're looking at, we look at how many offensive rebounds we have. You know, we want to rebound 33% of our misses. We want to turn our opponents over 16-plus times. You know, we're obviously preaching deflections. We want to get our hands in the passing lanes a ton. Um, that changes as the year goes on. I think we have a we have a different quota for out of league as we do in league. Um, you know, we want to make sure defensively that we're very solid in terms of our help side defense. We're in the right places. So you know, all those things really kind of come in a factor. And I think for us, the turnovers are big. You know, we want to we want to you know we want to turn the ball over 12 times a game. We want to turn them over 16 times, and we want to be able to turn those 16 turnovers into points immediately. And, and, that's, and I just want the kids to know this because when they're taking in all this information and the guys that, that download my app and, and they follow what I do, I want them to know that the game is both mental and physical. And when you talk about competition, it, it's both involved. It's not just going out there, ESP and highlights, dunking on people or, or what you see. There's a lot that goes behind the scenes in terms of preparation. Um, I remember being a freshman coach. And my freshman year, first practice, never forget it. I get the ball on the wing. A senior comes up, puts his elbow right in my chest, and takes the ball away. I look at the coach, and he says, play on. Okay? <laughs> so I want to know how tough your personal practice is because me personally, you know, as a freshman, I kind of invited the contact. And being a guy from Jersey, uh, I understood that this is a different game now, and I started doing that to other people. But let's talk about how competitive your practices are. Well, you know, first thing is we don't call any fouls. Um, I think we might have called, you know, maybe three fouls all year, all 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 year last year um, in terms of practice. So we don't call fouls. So you know, you're gonna have to learn how to be strong with the ball. We're just gonna take the ball from you. Uh, and then uh, the other thing we do in our practices, we never practice. We never do any drill longer than five or six minutes. So oh, wow. we go from, you know, we flow, and I think a large part of you talking about the mental preparation, you know, the game is not stagnant. The game is going to flow from end to end, and you've got to be able to process information on the fly, whether you're fatigued, whether you just made a mistake, whether you just had a great play. So because of that, our practice structure is it's five to six minutes. Nothing's ever longer than five to six. So we're flowing from drill to drill or play to play um, very, very quickly. And I think that's a hard pace for uh, our freshmen in particular to get used to, but I think once our team got used to it, you know, I think that's why we were really good in, in short spurts last year in terms of being able to, to take a negative and turn it into a positive 
because we practice it every day. You know, we're practicing going from one one drill that could be offensive base into defensive base, into pressing back in the offense. And we kind of we do that all the way through the practice to make sure that you mentally have to be engaged in what we need you to do. And you have to mentally be ready to be coached differently for each one. Oh, that's great information. Last but not least, I have a scenario for you, Coach. You have a kid that's, that's doing his thing, averaging 25 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists. He's the big man on campus. Uh, but next year, he's actually going to Mount St. Mary's. What is your advice for him? Because as you know, we, 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 we live in that instant coffee generation where people think everything's going to translate to, to the next level. And sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. So what's your advice to that individual? Well, the first thing I'm going to tell him is, is when you come in here, don't ever shot fake. All right? So when you're open, shoot it. Uh, the second thing I'm going to tell him is, you know, be ready to have an unbelievable preseason. Be ready to come in here and be really coachable. Um, I think the, the hardest thing is through competition, what happens with people, is they don't understand this is still a team game. So a guy across from you, you're competing against him, but you're he's still your teammate. And I think the hardest thing for young people to understand is that you know, we want to find the best. For us, we want to find the best 10 guys, best 11 guys that are going to help us win games. Most teams try to find the best 6, best 7. Um, so I think for a freshman, I'm telling him, you know, don't shy safe. Be ready to come in here and shoot the ball. Be ready to come in here and compete. And be ready to come in here and be a team guy, a guy that everyone wants to be around, a guy that everybody understands. And I think if they can come in and do those three things, then they're going to find a way to fit into our culture and the things that we like to do. Um, because, you know, we only recruit guys that are coachable. We only recruit guys that have a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for the game. And we only recruit guys that love playing the game. If you love those things, this is a great place for you. Um, if you don't, you know, if you love playing the game because it gets you girls or, you know, it gets you, you know, personal satisfaction, this is going to be a hard place for you to play. But if you love playing the games, you love being on a team, and you love a chance to win a championship and be around people who are who have a, a similar life as you do, this is a great place for you. Well, there you have it, folks, from the man himself, one, one of the rising stars in college basketball, Coach Christian. I want to really thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, my man. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem at all. And guys out there, if you're not listening to this via my basketball training app, go ahead and search Coach Godwin in your app store. As always, the formula remains the same. God first, work hard. We'll see you at the top.